Well, this weekend marks 10 years since Natalie Holloway disappeared, and in that decade, there have been false hopes, leads that turned out to be nothing. The last person Natalie was seen with was arrested, released, arrested again, released again, and is now in prison for the murder of another woman. Natalie's father has been following leads this whole time, along with a private investigator. I'm going to speak with them both in a moment. But first, a look back at Natalie's disappearance and the newest piece of information in the case. Martin Savage reports. In the 10 years since Natalie Holloway vanished in Aruba, her father has never stopped looking for her. It's been a decade of false hopes and dead ends. Ponds, I've had dogs over there numerous times, uh, searched cemeteries. Uh, I probably know that terrain better than some of the residents who live on the island. May 2005, Natalie Holloway's on a high school graduation trip to Aruba and disappears. Suspicions fall on three young men she's seen leaving a nightclub with, two brothers, and a Dutch national, the son of a judge, 17-year-old Euron Vandersloot. They first say that they dropped Natalie off at her hotel. Then the story changes. The brothers say that actually they dropped Euron and Natalie off at a different hotel. And, Euron says, that's where he left her, on this beach, alive and well. Hundreds of tourists and locals search for her. Authorities detain a number of people, then let them go. Dutch fighter jets are even flown overhead, scanning with sensors. Nothing is found. Many, including her father, believe Natalie's the victim of foul play, her body thrown in the ocean. Euron van der Sloot is never charged. The case goes cold. Then three years later, Dave Holloway gets a call from a mysterious man telling him... She's on land, and I know where her body is hidden. And my initial thought was, oh, this is another crazy. You have had a lot of those in this story, I believe. Uh, quite a few. Holloway dismisses the lead, and the years drag on. In 2010, Euron Van der Sloot is arrested and eventually convicted of the murder of 21-year-old Stephanie Flores Ramirez in Peru. Five years to the day Natalie Holloway vanished. To Holloway, it's more proof Vandersloot's responsible for his daughter's disappearance. But he's no closer to finding her. In 2012, a judge legally declares Natalie dead. Then in March, he gets a phone call from a Dutch journalist who tells him of an amazing lead, an eyewitness to his daughter's death. Did you know who he was referring to? I did not at the time. I said, well, who are you referring to? And, and he started bringing me up to date. And I said, well, that seems like that same guy who contacted me back in 2008. And just as in 2008, the witness says Natalie is buried on land. After years of disappointment, Holloway is afraid to believe it. And I thought, well, yeah, I can't go here because I've gone through so many of these where they had details and facts and it turned out to be nothing. So he asks a private investigator to check the witness out. And soon the investigator calls back. He said, hey, Dave, said uh, the guy passed this voice analysis test. And I thought, oh, my gosh. Wow. So I had the best time of my life. Now, for the first time in nearly a decade, the dad who never gave up dares to hope he may finally bring his daughter back home. And Martin Savage joins me now for, from Aruba. What do we know about this witness? I mean, how credible is he? Yeah, a pretty amazing story. By the way, we're standing in front of the hotel where Natalie Holloway stayed 10 years ago. Yuri de Young is this witness's name. He lives in Amsterdam. He's Dutch, but he was here in 2005. He admits he's got a criminal past. But what you find out is that this is not really a new witness. This is a guy who's come back time and time again to the Holloway family, to the authorities, trying to convince them what he saw is really what happened. The problem is a lot of people, almost everyone believes Natalie ended up in the ocean. No one wants to hear otherwise. When we heard this, we said, we got to see this guy. So we flew to Amsterdam. Tomorrow, we'll introduce you to him. We'll sit down and we question him and grill him. And you're going to be able to decide whether what he says you think is really true. Hmm. Anderson? All right, Martin Savage, I appreciate it. We'll look forward to that tomorrow. Joining me now, we're Natalie's father, Dave Holloway, and a lead private investigator, T.J. Ward, who had been working with the Holloways since Natalie's disappearance. Does it seem like it's been 10 years for you, Dave? I mean, it, it's, it's got to be hard to comprehend that. Well, we went through some of the hard parts in, in the very beginning. Uh, 2005 to 2008 was probably one of the toughest time periods because it just happened. Sure. And 
And then you start trying to go through an emotional uh, type closure. Is, is such a thing possible? I mean, I always think that word closure is sort of, you know, a word people use in TV a lot, but, but yeah. it, 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 you, it never, you never move on from it fully. I said. You just try to get close. You know, basically what we did was um, uh, you, you, we tried to come up with a theory of what we thought happened, and then we went through some legal processes where we had Natalie declared deceased. And then, uh, you know, and after Yarn was put into prison uh, for the murder of another girl, uh, that kind of helped put closure on things mm. for well, our family. When, when you found out that that he had killed a, a, another girl and that he was going to serve so much time, what went through your mind? I mean, it, well, I knew uh, based on his personality and what we've seen so far that he's going to do it again to some innocent girl, and and then here we have it. Uh, it did happen. Does and, it feel like a little bit of justice? You know, you try to <clears throat> satisfy yourself in your own mind that he's in jail. It's not for Natalie, but you know he's got to think about it. This trip that you just took down there with TJ, I want to talk to you about that. First of all, there's a, a, a witness who I guess had contacted you back in 2008. TJ, do you believe this witness is credible? I had an opportunity to speak to um, this witness several times, and I was able to take his transmission from a 40-minute conversation, and from the conversation, from doing an analysis on it, I determined he is being truthful with what he saw and what he knows. So you went down just recently. What were you able to to see? What were you able to do? Well, we wanted to see what the Marriott Hotel looked like and, and just kind of see if we could believe his story. Because he, he says that she was buried under a staircase by, by uh, where, under, where uh, the Marriott uh, is now. Yeah, foundation. And I wanted to see what the area looked like, and we did take a service slash cadaver dog with us maybe in hopes of getting lucky, but we were not allowed to search the area that was in question. Do you think about giving them? No. I mean, I, I just sometimes have to do a, a self-check to say, you know, am, am I going more than what the most people would normally do? Or, is, you know, you just have to look in the mirror and, and see. And, and it's just like this lead here. I couldn't pass it up. Mm -hmm. I, I just had to go. And, it, and it's, I think that's what most every parent would, would do as well. You know, you just can't let it go. What, what do you want people to remember about Natalie when they, when they think about her? And, and a lot of people obviously, you know, still pray for her, pray for your family, think about her. People know her name around the world. What do you want people to remember when they think of her name? Well, I just uh, want everyone to know that, uh, you know, you've got kids in a household and, you know, you can preach to them and preach to them and preach to them about safety and, and bad things do happen and, and this is one of them. But, uh, you know, Natalie is one of those kids who was a model student and uh, had her life planned out. She wanted to be a doctor. She wanted to be a doctor and had her life planned out and, and knew where she was going in life. And, you, you know, you look at situations like ours, they study so hard and graduate, expect them to go to college and boom, missing. And that's, you know, I, I just feel for her because of that hard work as well. Do you believe one day you will have an answer? I do. Uh, I always thought it would be right around the corner, and here we are 10 years later. And I, I think one of these days we finally will. Uh, this could be one of them in this situation here, uh, or it may not be. Well, I, I hope you get an answer, Dave. Thank you so much for talking to us, and TJ as well. Thank you.